Welcome guys to the Blur Gaming Network's first game review. My name is Blur and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and consider subscribing. If you liked the video, go ahead and like and uh, make sure to hit that little bell icon so that you get notified anytime a new video comes out. So. What's the subject of today's video? This is gonna be a first impressions on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So let's get into it. Back in November 13th, 2007, Ubisoft published the very first Assassin's Creed. Born out of Prince of Persia, A Sands of Time, and mixing in some additional historical elements, to much critical acclaim. And I hated it. I actually did not enjoy an Assassin's Creed game until Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. I was enamored with that game. The ship mechanics and everything that went along with that, new and improved combat, almost RPG-esque system and upgrade trees. I really, really enjoyed Black Flag. Their settlement system was amazing. The character and story was incredible. They really outdid themselves. Some people would argue that Assassin's Creed Origins, made by the same Black Flag team, would be an incredible game, and a lot of people believe that it's one of the best games in the series. And in my opinion, they would be wrong. I actually didn't enjoy Assassin's Creed Origins as much as I wanted to. Made by the same developers, I really wanted that to be so, so good. Unfortunately, it was extremely ambitious and definitely the future of the franchise, but you can tell that a lot of those ideas were half-baked. But fast forward to the more recent installment of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I went ahead and picked it up and I was enamored by Assassin's Creed Odyssey. See, it took all of the components from Assassin's Creed Origins and improved them. It made each system better. It made the side quests and storylines and story arcs that were there feel important. Each location felt like it was teeming with excitement and discoverability. I wanted to explore what was behind every mountain, climb every nook and cranny, and maybe take a picture of me hanging off of a statue's balls. I played all of the DLC for Odyssey. I killed all of the mercenaries, beat the entire gladiator arena, killed everyone from my hit list, and completed that game. So that brings us to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, I have spent some time in the Nordics and really enjoy Norse mythology and the entire idea behind Vikings. I just think that they're a really cool underexplored group of people within our western histories. So again, I go into Assassin's Creed Valhalla with extremely high hopes, hoping that the game can meet the promise of Assassin's Creed Odyssey as well as elevate it due to, you know, some of my love for Viking and that Viking era. So let's go ahead and start off with the story. Now, again, admittedly, this is not going to be a full review. This is really my first impressions on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I have put in somewhere between, I want to say about 15 hours into this game. This isn't enough for me to even scratch the surface or give an entire review on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That game is just so long and there's so much to do. And we're gonna go ahead and start with just my first thoughts on the opening sections of the game. With Assassin's Creed Valhalla, given the fact that Odyssey had such a great story in my opinion, I had really high hopes for the story kind of going into it. And it opened up amazing. So you start the game as a little Eivor, a Viking from the Raven Clan. You have this really neat kind of thematic opening sequence. And obviously the opening, it doesn't have a happy ending. 
and you get thrusted into some combat. Your father, whose status in the clan is like really unknown, I don't think they ever really talk about the status of your family. They get attacked during the celebration. Your father sacrifices himself for the village. I'm just kind of thinking about it. Who other than the king can really like save? the entire clan there? I don't know, they made it seem like he was an important person to the Raven Clan, but they never really talk about his importance to the Raven Clan or what his status was or why him sacrificing himself would have saved the rest of the clan. But notwithstanding, the moment he gets killed, the bad guy yells out, kill them all. So, um, yeah, that didn't matter. So, <laughs> you, you run away, you get thrown into the snow, and then you get attacked by a wolf, and now you're the wolf kissed. I can say that they don't expand on this anymore, at least not in the opening sequence of the game. Maybe there'll be something more to it. We'll just have to wait and see. Then the game gets a little weird and says, hey, there's, there's two streams here. You gotta pick a stream right? Like a memory stream. Because as you guys all know, like the Assassin's Creed games are really science fiction games, kinda. And it, this doesn't make sense, and maybe it'll make more sense down the line when they're talking about the two different streams and, and so on, but effectively the difference between the true streams is what gender you are. Uh, whether or not you're gonna be a male or female protagonist, and you'll move from that direction. Then there's a very crazy time jump in the story, and then from this point on, the story is extremely basic and nothing to write home about. Very basic revenge story, at least for the opening sequence, with a whole lot of stuff that doesn't really make a ton of sense. You're pledging your allegiance really to kind of like your brother, stepbrother, you've been taken in by the king, who for some reason wasn't killed when the Raven clan was uh, raided, even though the guy said kill them all? I don't know. Story's confusing. So, <laughs> it ends up being a very basic revenge story where you need to go out, find and kill the guy who killed your father. You end up doing that, you come back, you, you have a meeting at, at some council for some reason with no real catalyst for it. Some guy just says, yeah homie, I'm, I'm the new king, bow down to me. And the people are just like, yeah sure. So, that kicks off the rest of the game where you and your adopted brother, I guess, go out to England to make a new life for yourselves because you do not want to bow down to this new king. All right, cool. So that's kind of the gist of the opening story. Once you get over to England, you have to establish a foothold. You end up calling it Ravensthorpe. And then effectively you need to start recruiting people as allies in England. There's a couple of side quests once you get over to England. And then these people join your group. Some of them are interesting, some are less so. So far, not an incredible story. Very vanilla, very basic. Something that moves the plot forward and gets you doing things, but nothing really to write home about. It's something to move you forward. Now, talking about graphics and sound, I'm playing this game on my RTX 3090 build. I have a AMD Ryzen 9 3950X. You know, the game runs fantastic. I have everything blown out at max settings. I'm, running it at 4K 60. Uh, only reason I'm running it at 4K 60 is because my monitor that I play on doesn't exceed 60 frames per second, but not that it really needs to for this type of game, right? So yeah, the game is gorgeous. The textures are fantastic. There are a couple of graphical glitches that I've seen, actually quite a few, that might just have something to do with either how new my video card is or the game is, but I'm sure they'll patch some of that out. The sounds are really good as well. The cling and clang of all the people fighting in the background. It sometimes is actually pretty funny because it doesn't match the size of the fight that's going on. Pretty comical sometimes, but I mean, all in all, it, the sound is fantastic from the crackling leaves as you walk through them to the kind of pitter patter of your feet 
and the crunch of snow as you walk through. Really good sound design. Not anything, again, earth shattering, but really well executed. A couple of anomalies that I do want to kind of mention is this is still running on the Assassin's Creed Origins game engine. So birds fly at like half a frame per second. It's really jarring if you look at birds in the distance. And for some reason, for me, fire just didn't look very good. Yeah, I, I don't know why. It just, it looked almost low res, low frame rate. It didn't look particle <laughs> as you would probably expect Flame to look. So just a couple of things. I think I'm getting nitpicky at that point though. I mean, the game looks great. It's beautiful. Doesn't look next gen, I'll say that, but it looks like an extremely beautiful and refined current gen game, if you will. I guess it's no longer current gen since the PS5 and the Xbox Series X is already out, but yeah, think about it that. Now, when it comes to settings for the game, the game has some really intensive settings. I actually enjoy the granularity of the settings that I have here. I am playing this game on PC. I am not playing on the PS5 or Xbox Series X. I do have a little more control over some of the settings that maybe you might not have on console, but I think the difficulty settings are still something that you get on the console versions. I really like the, the fact that you have three settings for difficulty. You can change the difficulty on your exploration, you can change the difficulty on your combat, and you can change your difficulty on your stealth segment. So you can actually tailor the experience to what you are tuned for. You can even turn on one hit assassinations, although the game will actually tell you they don't want you to play that way, but the option is there. And I actually kind of like that option. I don't have it on myself, but you know, it, if you hearken back to just about any game where you're kind of stealthing about, if you're stealth killing somebody, you don't expect them to get back up. That's kind of weird. And I always found that weird when that was happening in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but you can turn it back on and make it so that those are one hit kills. So that's good. I really enjoy the granularity that th this game allows you to tweak the difficulty. Look, you might not be good at stealthing. Not that it matters anyway, but I mean, you might not be good at stealthing. <laughs> you might be great at stealthing, but not great at combat. So you can tweak each one to your liking. I think this is a great option. So let's talk about gameplay. Look guys, in all honesty, I did not like the gameplay in Valhalla as much as I A wanted to, or as much as I did AC Origin. I, I find the control scheme to be extremely clunky. I am playing with my elite controller. I'm, I'm finding the controls to be very clunky. You know, like things like getting onto your horse is a different button as getting off of your horse. Now, obviously on PC, I can remap a lot of the controls, but when you do that, there are a lot of times where you need to consider other actions that you're going to be pulling off. And oftentimes it even tells you that you're going to negatively impact the gameplay if you make certain changes. So it, you know, you, you want to refrain from doing something like that. And I can, I'm not necessarily sure whether or not you can change the control scheme on the new console versions of this game. So I'm going to go ahead and judge it off of its default control scheme. And frankly, it's kind of wonky. Again, there's multiple buttons that aren't intuitive. I can say that combat, it's not satisfying. I don't feel like there's a satisfying like contact to an enemy. It feels a little floaty. And if you want to dual wield weapons, don't. And the reason I say that isn't for any other reason than dual wielding weapons just doesn't really positively impact combat. Look, like when I think about dual wielding weapons, I'm thinking about an agile, quick, very offensive type gameplay style. But because of the way that they laid out the buttons for attack and parry and second weapon attack, it doesn't really feel as smooth as it should. So like the attack buttons are light attack for your main hand is on the right button. Heavy attack is on the right trigger. The left trigger brings out your bow and arrow and then a left button is your parry and second hand weapon attack. You parry when you lightly press on left button and you use your kind of 
it's almost like an ability, I guess. Not quite, but just like an additional move if you press and hold it, right? And some are admittedly more useful than others, but I found them all to be clunky. I don't find it incredibly intuitive to have an attack button also mapped to your parry button. It just feels odd. And not to mention that there are other gameplay decisions. There, are, you know, the, the side quests and main quests kind of range from, oh, okay, this is pretty exciting to, oh God, this again. There's definitely a lot to it that might get repetitive over time. I also did find that there were large pieces of land that you have to kind of traverse either on foot or on horseback, and it wasn't entirely interesting. It wasn't as interesting as the swooping landscapes of ancient Greece and kind of looking at all the statues and everything that they have going on there. England in this particular game so far doesn't seem terribly varied. Looks a bit gray. I, I guess not gray, but kind of brownish in color in general. It, not to say that it's not pretty looking, because as I established in the graphics settings, it's it can be really gorgeous. It's just the uh, background dressing just seems a bit blah. It doesn't seem incredibly interesting. Also, that's not to get into any of the bugs I encountered or some of the weird decision making that you have in the gameplay mechanics. So, like, if you find a place that you want to raid, you have to raid it. You cannot slowly pick everyone off one by one. You have to call out your horn and get people to go in and fight. And the reason that you absolutely need to do that is because you need people to help you open up doors and open up chests and things like that. So I guess you can go in, pick everyone off, and then call in a huge horde of vikings to basically sit around but i mean ultimately they're you know you can't open up doors without them so you got have to call the horn and so many times those people were around me just sitting around doing nothing looking at me like i was an idiot trying to push open this box <laughs> to get my materials now the settlement system is actually pretty good i really enjoyed you know, collecting materials and everything like that in my journey and going back to the settlement and kind of building things up. I really enjoyed that in Black Flag and I actually really like it in this one as well. Reminds me more of The Witcher than it would, uh, you know, any of the past two previous Assassin's Creed games. There isn't a lot of randomized loot that's dropped during gameplay. Most of the armor sets and things like that are actually pieces of armor that you will go out and hunt. Now, there's two different schools. This isn't necessarily a looter. It's more of a third person action adventure game. So I actually think that this is okay. I actually kind of enjoy it, truthfully. It's a little change of pace from all the loot games that, that are out there today. Also, another piece of the game that I actually really enjoy is the level up. Now, how you level up and you gain new abilities and new status points and things like that, every time you level up, you get two ability points. And you place those two ability points on a Final Fantasy X-S board where you get to pick an ability and then, you know, you pick a path, effectively. There's three paths. There's the standard combat path, the assassination or assassin path, and then you have your ranged path. Each one will give you points for the other eventually, but you're definitely specializing within a specific skill set. The one thing I will say that I'm not really keen on is the fact that when you're putting points into something, you don't actually have the full view of the tree. So you don't actually know whether or not you want to go a specific path just because you want a specific ability or something like that. It's something that really should be considered when looking at this. But the good thing is, is that you can take back your, your points that you place for leveling up. So it's actually not that big of a deal if you go the wrong way in a tree. So really to wrap this up, the 
game is fine. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's actually a really good entertaining game. It's just, it's a bit more mediocre than I would have cared for. It, coming off of the heels of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I really had high hopes and maybe that was on me, but with games like Cyberpunk 2077 coming out and other major game releases with new IPs, it's just a little disappointing to see this game kind of fall a bit into repetitiveness and kind of mediocrity. I'm not going to be putting a number on this first impression. I don't think that numbers really serve the review community, but I mean, ultimately, I think if you're into the more recent modern Assassin's Creed games, you'll actually enjoy this one. Just don't expect it to be the best one out of the bunch. So guys, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Did you guys play Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Are you guys really enjoying the game? Did you get a new console? Were you able to get one of those new consoles to play this game? Or are you gaming on a PC rig? Leave your comments down below. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and hitting that little bell icon so you get notified every time a new video comes out. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern on DLive, Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. So if you have a moment, come check us out. And with all of that being said, thank you guys for joining us today, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.